In this video, I'm going to flip rocks and logs to find reptiles and amphibians. Flipping cover objects is one of the most effective ways to find cool animals in their natural environment. Throughout the video, I will be attempting to observe interesting animals and their behaviors while also teaching you cool things about them. I'm going to explore a couple of different locations, but I started by looking for animals in this forest. Logs like this one are good at harboring nature. This redback salamander is one of the many reptiles and amphibians that call this habitat home. Named for the red band running from the head to the tail, this species is extremely abundant across its range in the eastern United States. I continued flipping logs until I found this tiny snake. This is a northern ringneck snake, a small terrestrial snake that is hard to find without flipping objects in search for them. Spending a lot of their time underground, this snake species benefits from the food that these logs attract, especially redback salamanders. Since this ringneck snake seemed bothered from the ants and myself, I gently put it back under its log before continuing my search. Under the next log, I found another redback salamander. This one was missing a part of its tail. And then I found another one. Although this salamander doesn't look very similar in color to the last one, this is also a redback salamander. This is a leadback phase, which is still a redback salamander, yet it lacks the characteristic band. Over the next hour, I kept flipping more redback salamanders. Salamanders like these hunt unsuspecting invertebrates in the leaf litter. You might have noticed that these salamanders look quite slender. This is because they belong to a family of salamanders that breathe through their skin and a mucous membrane in their mouth. Additionally, the bumps along their body are coastal grooves which help salamanders collect water since they require moisture. I came back the next day in search for more reptiles and amphibians in the forest. The first log I flipped was home to this eastern garter snake. This is a juvenile eastern garter snake that is no more than a few months old. The snake soon flared out its body, an act that helps this snake look larger for potential predators. Just like the ringneck snake, eastern garter snakes also will hunt redback salamanders when presented with the opportunity. After seeing another redback salamander under this log, I found another species of salamander. This is a spotted salamander. Ambistomatids like this one are more bulky than the lungless salamanders and have functional lungs. Before heading to a rock wall to look for more snakes, I headed to a local creek to see some aquatic amphibians. On the way to the creek, I saw an optimal log and found this four-toed salamander. These salamanders have a white belly with black spots as well as golden coloration on the head and tail. When threatened, these salamanders will play dead. Once I got to the creek bed, I flipped a rock and found two amphibians underneath. The first is this green frog, a species of frog that I don't usually see under cover like this. The second animal was this northern two-lined salamander. This salamander was only a juvenile, but in general, these salamanders don't get very large. Alongside good rocks to flip, this creek had a lot of frogs. Pickerel frogs like this one were very common in the area. The coloration on the underside of this frog serves as a warning to predators. Pickerel frogs are harmless to humans, but dangerously poisonous to other small animals. The next location I went to in order to look for reptiles and amphibians was this large wall of rocks. After finding the snake shed, I was convinced that I would be seeing some more snakes. Soon after, I spotted two large northern black racers basking in some bushes. This racer was in shed and slithered into a nearby rock crevice. The second racer was angry with me. In order to prevent stressing the snake out, I just watched as it slithered away.
After seeing the racers, I continued searching in the rocks when I found this American toad. My observation with the toad was cut short when I noticed something in the rocks. This is an eastern hognose snake, one of the more rare snakes to find in this area. Unfortunately, the snake slithered off and I couldn't see it anymore. However, with a stroke of luck, I managed to see another one. This is the eastern hognose snake. These snakes feed almost exclusively on toads, which they subdue with their mild venom in their rear positioned fangs. These snakes require habitats like this one, which have a collection of forest, sandy soil, and rocks. Their snout is used for digging. The next location I went in order to flip rocks was this pond. Soon after arriving, I spotted this northern water snake. Since it wasn't a pile of rocks, it was inaccessible for me to get a closer look. Since there weren't a lot of loose rocks, I spent a lot of time looking around rocks for basking reptiles and amphibians. That's how I spotted this green frog. These frogs are super common in all sorts of places and are probably living in your backyard. I also managed to find another pickerel frog. When I got back to the rocks where I saw the hidden water snake, I found another one. Since this snake ducked under the rocks, I set up a camera to record if it re-emerged. That's when I captured the moment of this northern water snake coming out to bask. 